Hello and welcome, thank you for joining me. My name's Arcadian, the number one dumpster tier gamer, and we are coming back in for video three of our Skyrim Survival Let's Play. Guys, before we start this, I know I feel like I'm doing this in every video, but I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, over this weekend, my first Let's P Survival Let's Play video of this series has reached 192 views. That is more than any three of my top videos put together. That is just absolutely phenomenal. Also, we've reached our goal of 10 likes. So the goal for this video is to hit 15. Uh, so just right there at the bottom, right underneath the screen, there's that thumbs up button. If you can hit that thumbs up and smash it. Uh, and if you don't like the content afterwards, you can feel free to, hit to to remove it and take the thumbs up away. But I hope that you guys will enjoy the content. And we're going to go ahead and have fun and play this game together. So thank you guys so much for your support. Let's get into it. All right, so we are back into our Let's Play. Um, we just finished Bleak Falls Barrow. Uh, stopped here at Riverwood Trader, dropped off the Golden Claw, got some gold, and uh, sold off a few of our items. So now we need to go take on, or see a man about a dragon. That's, that's our next goal here. Uh, so with that being said, let's make our way to back to Riverwood. Nope. Sorry. Nothing. Grab my horse here. The horse definitely makes travel, especially through survival mode, a lot easier. Um, oh, oh, I forgot. One thing I forgot to mention. So apparently it was brought to my attention that we forgot to pick up a guardian stone. Uh, so unfortunately, I am a very distractive per distracted person. And so, yes, I did forget to pick up a guardian stone. Um, I knew we were standing out in front of the guardian stones. And while we were standing out there, I was talking about uh, the skills and stuff that we would pick. And I said that we were going to pick the Mage Stone, but we never actually picked it. Uh, so thank you for letting me know about that. It was, uh, let me see here real fast. It was, who was it who mentioned it? Right here. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, Flies Alone. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. I definitely needed to, to do that. Uh, we would have actually gained so much more Conjuration experience if I would have remembered to grab that Mage Stone. Um, so we actually would be a higher level than we are now. Currently we are sitting at level 10. We've got uh, level 36 in Conjuration. Conjuration, if you're playing a mage build, Conjuration is the, um, that's really the best way to play a mage, in my opinion. Especially on Legendary Difficulty. You can get through a good majority of, of the game with a Conjuration Mage, uh, with a Destruction Backup. So that's how we are playing this character. We are, this is Konarik. Uh, we are playing the, um, basically the Dragon Priest Reborn. Um... So we are. That's that's the that's the premise of the build. And if you are interested in, in learning the backstory and, and the theory behind Konrick, uh feel free to check out that first video where I kind of explain uh, the character uh, premise um, and everything behind that. But definitely want to pick up the Mage Stone. You could make an argument for the Warrior Stone here. Um, however, I feel like the Warrior skills will level up a lot faster than our Mage skills will. Like, uh, our Conjuration will level up extremely fast anyway, uh, but Destruction in general will level up extremely slowly. 
if you can see, we're, we're already level 36 in one-handed. We're only level 17 in destruction. And destruction just takes forever to level up uh, without certain without doing certain exploits uh, that we want to try to avoid. There are ways to make your level up, or your destruction skills level up um, extremely fast. In fact, you can level up all of your mage skills extremely fast. Uh, but we will be, we will not be doing those um, those particular things because it is, in my opinion, an exploit. The only one that is not really, in a, I mean, it is, but it isn't. Uh, is the uh, alter or not alteration? Sorry, the illusion one. The illusion one is you're, you're just casting muffle over and over again, which is a viable thing. Um, but it just becomes kind of useless if you're if you're ca if you're casting it, but you're not actually using it for what you're casting it for. So we have a kind of long list of things that we want to get done today. So I am hoping to get a good long video in for you guys. Um, it was brought to my attention. The longer videos are kind of hard uh, because you have to be able to hold everybody's attention uh, for the entire... Um, is that Meek? Yeah, that is Meek. Uh, you have to be able to hold everybody's attention for the entire time of the video. Uh, and on survival mode, that's especially difficult because you have to travel everywhere on foot or in a cart. Uh, so with that being done, uh, it becomes kind of a, a very aggressive way to play the game. Um, but you kind of have to do what you got to do. And all of my videos are largely unedited. That's uh, I feel like giving you guys the raw content is more important to me than having a, a pristine edited video. As well as I just don't have the experience or the time to edit my own videos. So... As we make our way back over here to Whiterun, we will be hopping off the horse here in just a second. You could technically take it right up to the front gate, but we'll go the rest of the way on foot. We are making our way up to Dragon's Reach. Uh, we need to give Faringar the stone tablet. I don't know where Fangdahl went. He kind of disappeared on us. So hopefully he kind of resets and comes back to us as we enter here at Whiterun. There he is. We kind of left him behind when we hopped on the horse. I work for Bella. So how are we looking on carry weight? We've got 95 carry weight. Where's that coming from? We've got 10 here in the fur armor. We've got a lot of carry weight in the in, into the potions. Scrolls, food, ingredients. That's part of it there. And then the Dragonstone takes up a pretty hefty sum. So we're all right on our carry weight. But while we're here, let's go ahead and stop at Bellathor's General Goods and Arcadia's Cauldron. Uh, and just sell off a couple more of those water-breathing potions. Trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. Work on getting our funds up. We're over 5,000 gold right now, which is a really good sum to have. Any any real Skyrim player worth his salt is going to be rich by the time that you get to level 10 to level 15. Yeah, gold should not be a major problem at that point. So we are set. Uh, by the way, since we gave her the frost salts, uh, frost salts. All of this stuff up here is free to take. The major things that I want to do, because I'm not making alchemy a big point of this build, is these two Canis Root we're going to need, this Imp Stole here we're going to need, grab the Death Bell, 
And if you come back here, there is another death bell there. And then there's a couple death bells in here. These are actually going to be fairly important later. So go ahead and grab those. Grab these lavender here. If there's anything I can help you with, you have but to ask. And I think that's all we need, really, to be honest with you. You can grab a couple of the potions. Uh, she doesn't care if you take like this, that uh, potion, these health potions you can grab if you want. The stanima potion you can grab. There's a couple more potions. You can grab the health potion over here. And then this one here. You can't grab either of those because she'll get mad at you. Um, You'll find tonics, that looks shafts, good to me. On my I think that's and everything that I need. Okay. We're going to grab those, but the main things that we're going to need uh, for over here are Nightshade. Uh, so, let's go up here. There's a good spot for Nightshade up through here. Uh, also, eventually we're going to come back here and we're going to get all of that blue mountain flower and all that lavender. Um, the reason why we're going to do that is because we want to get our way up to uh, our speech skill being up to level 50. The best way to do that uh, is to get uh, potions made. And there are specific two specific ingredients that are easy to come by, uh, that you can get a ton of the ingredients and be able to get your speech up to level 50 uh, through training. Um, and the way to do that is by getting potions of lavender, blue mountain flower, and hanging moss. There is a bunch of, or there is a good, con like a places where you can get good concentrations of these ingredients. Um, to be able to make a decent conjuration potion that will sell for a decent amount uh, and gain you a bunch of experience. So <clears throat> we will definitely be doing that here in the future. Uh, not quite yet because I don't want to over level my um, I don't want to over level myself and put myself in a bad position. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything right. But the reason why you want to do that is because you can use um, those potions and you can sell them to a certain person for training. Um, basically, you buy the training from him and then you use the potions to buy or to get the gold back that you used for the training. While we're here, let's go ahead and make up a couple potions that we're going to use. So the Canis Root and the Imp Store, we're going to need more of these. We're, we're, there's going to be a place where we can go to get a bunch of Canis Root. Uh, but these get, give you a potion of paralysis, uh, which is extremely strong. Uh, we're going to need that for a uh, something that we're doing maybe this video, might be next video. The next thing that we're going to want is a glowing mushroom and the nightshade. This gives a fortified destruction potion. So we're going to grab a couple of those so that we're ready. Okay, uh, with that being done, let's go ahead and get some food in our system here, get our hunger taken care of. Um, gonna eat all the, all the extra stuff. Everything else is either gonna be used for something or has too much. Yes, yes, don't worry. Although the chance to see a Legion dragging up close would be tremendously valuable. Now, let me show you something else I found. Very intriguing. I think your employers may be interested as well. Hmm? Ma, yes, the Jarl's protege. Back from Bleak Vault Barrow. <laughs> you didn't die, you see. Ah, Sounds like you were hoping I would. Bleak Vault Barrow. Seems you are a cut above the usual fruits the Jarl sends my way. That is where your job ends and mine begins. The work of the mind, sadly undervalued in Skyrim. My associate here will be pleased to see your handiwork. She discovered its location by means she has so far declined to share with you. So your information was correct after all. And we have our friends here to thank for recovering it for us. He went into Bleak Falls Barrow and got that? Nice work. 
Just send me a copy Barringar. when you decipher this. Barringar, you need to come at once. A dragon's been sighted nearby. You should come too. A dragon? How exciting. Where was it seen? What, what was it doing? I'd take this a bit more seriously if I were you. If the dragon decides to attack White Run. Attack it again already. Stop it. Let's go. So, Irilev tells me you came from the Western Watchtower? Yes, my lord. Tell him what you told me about the dragon. No, that's right. We saw it coming from the south. It was fast. Faster than anything I've ever seen. What did it do? Is it attacking the watchtower? No, my lord. It was just circling overhead when I left. I never ran so fast in my life. I thought it would have come after me, for sure. Good work, son. We'll take it from here. Get down to the barracks for some food and rest. Burn it. Here it is. We'd better gather some guardsmen and get down there. I've already I your ordered my men to march them in the main gate. Good. Don't fail me. There's no time to stand on ceremony, my friend. I need your help again. I want you to go with Irileth and help her fight this dragon. You survived Helgen. So you have I didn't do much fighting of dragons and Helgen, so... I haven't forgotten the service you did for me in retrieving the dragon stone for Faringar. As a token of my esteem, I have instructed Avenici that you are now permitted to purchase property in the city. And please, accept this gift from my personal armor. As you come along, I would very much like to see this dragon. Studded armor of major health. Increases your health by 40 points. We'll go ahead and... What are you doing here? Mercenary work? It might suit you. Why are you here? Learn the enchantment on that. Sometimes my wife's a good woman. She can be a little hard-headed sometimes, but I love her just the same. My sapphire doesn't like that I've been spending so much time looking for my father's old sword. He fed his entire family with the gold he made using that weapon. I'm not about to let it gather dust in some thief's trophy room. I tracked it to a group of bandits nearby, but I'm no fool. I don't know why I'm saying this, but if you find it out in your travels, I'll be grateful to you. If you find that sword... Halted Stream Camp. Uh, if I remember correctly, that one is one we were going to have to go to eventually. Yeah, so yeah, that's one we're going to have to go to eventually anyway. Uh, so we will be checking that out here in the future. That's when we're ready to start knocking out some smithing. That's got, so if you don't know, Halted Stream Camp, right up here above Whiterun, has the highest concentration of iron ore of any place else in Skyrim. So between Halted Stream Camp and Ember Shard Mine right here, uh, you can gain enough iron to get your smithing up to level 30 fairly easily. Uh, and then you'll be able to uh, start making Dwarven gear, which is gonna be the best leveling uh, gear possible to get. <laughs> or leveling gear to make. All right, so we need to eat one of these. That gets us well fed. Um, we don't have the well rested bonus, so I think we are going to stop here at the end. Uh, one of the comments that I got asked about is why do like why play survival? Like survival is extremely tedious. And it can be. It's it's makes you play the game a little bit slower. But the easiest way that I can think of to help you to survive in Skyrim is talking to these innkeepers and buying their food. These guys have a very cheap food that gives you lots and lots of um, hunger. So, for example, like the cooked bass right here gives you 220 points of hunger. 
only 6 septums. Cooked pogfish, 220, only 15 septums. You can get chicken breasts, 220 for 12. Uh, you can get horker loaf, 380 for 12. So this is Im immensely valuable. Lake goat roast, 220 for 12. This stuff is super, super cheap. Uh, salmon steak, 220 for 12. So you can just go ahead and buy these little pieces of uh, food for pennies. Like this stuff is super cheap. Uh, and be able to feed yourself well through basically all of uh, survival without having to worry about uh, not having the food or anything like that. Um, also, like I said before, you can make vegetable soups. Four ingredients, cabbage, tomatoes, potatoes, and leeks. Uh, with those four ingredients, you can make the vegetable soup, which gives you 380 points of hunger, as well as it restores one point of health for 720 seconds and, and one point of stamina for 720 seconds. This also gives you another benefit. That one point of stamina per second for 720 seconds will allow you to power attack infinitely through that entire 720 seconds. Uh, you will never have a failed power attack as long as you eat one of these before you do so. So this is a massive, massive buff. It's I would recommend this uh, particular soup for players who are not playing on survival mode. If you're a two-handed weapon player or a one-handed weapon player, you have got to get this soup. Um, let's see here. So we've got six cabbage, we've got six leeks, three potatoes, and seven tomatoes. We also have on us uh, some uh, fire salts. So the reason why that's important is because when you have fire salts and those four ingredients, you can make hot vegetable soup. This is even better than regular vegetable soup, and this is the reason why. Uh, your warmth is increased by 25 points for 300 seconds. That is five minutes of getting increased, of getting 25 increased warmth. That is huge, and that will save you. Depends. I think her. Yeah, so her inventory is the same as. Is the same as um, hold us. Uh, so anyway, that gives you 25 points of warmth. And just to give you an idea, your boots, your bracers give you 24. So that's like having an extra pair of gloves or an extra pair of shoes on. Uh, or turning one of those into the same as your armor, which is 54. So it's ha almost half of your armor value. And it's the same it's almost equal to your bracers or shoes or even your helmet so it, it's just a very valuable item to have mm -hmm. anytime you have fighter salts you want to make it into hot soups if you're playing on survival mode that's my little food rant over so now we need to go take on a dragon um we our carry weight is at 102 we are not I'm trying to think. Even if we get three of each, we should still be all right. Yeah. Even if we get three of each, we still should have enough carry weight. Availability. So let's go take on a dragon. So the dragon that we're going to fight is over at the Western Watchtower. Uh, you can see it right there in the distance. Um, all we got to do is just run basically in a straight line to that. You can stop and, and talk to Irileth as she's she's taking up her guards over here, and basically they just case the joint before they walk it up. Before they walk up, uh, we're just going to go straight there. Get a good look of Bleak Falls Barrow right up there. 
as you can see this entire place is on fire the dragon's definitely been here uh, it didn't attack by the time that that uh, guard had started to run uh, but it had attacked after he left so now we're here the guard up here is going to walk out and say we need to run away no, get back. Still. Uh, fury is not going to do anything for us here so we're going to get conjure flame adronach He's going to come right out from around that mountain there. Summon our flame atronach. And we'll start with some elemental flares. Want to make sure that we have enough to get our bound sword out. Okay, now he's here. Let's go ahead and drink our, one of our destruction potions. This will increase the damage of our destruction spells by quite a bit. As soon as he gets to a position where he stopped and we can guarantee a hit. Here we go. Perfect. Now we can send these out. Do quite a bit of damage. Oop, I missed one. He's locked in on a target here. Oop, missed him. We got to be careful because if he focuses uh, focuses on us at all, it's basically an instant death, uh, especially on legendary difficulty. So we want to make sure that he is focused on these guys and not on us. Like this is going to be at me. That one hurt. Nope, I did not want. Oops. Where'd he go? There he is. Okay, so this is kind of where we kind of start losing viability as a mage character. Once we run out of Magicka, we kind of lose a bit of our damage potential. So we want to focus here, let him focus on the guard. Oh, he's focusing on us. We do not want that. Looks like my conjured Antronach is gone. Get another one down. Let's re-up our bound sword. So you just take this fight very, very, very slowly. You don't want to overextend yourself. Eventually, you're going to kill him. It's not like a one-on-one a -on -one fight with a dragon, in which case, like, it is extremely dangerous. Like, there are dangers to this, but as long as you play it right... Let him focus on your left. Let's go ahead and hit F5, just in case. Okay, now he's not going to be able to fly anymore. Once you get a dragon beyond half health, they are not able to fly. Uh, so, what that does is that allows for you to get a one-on-one, -on -one, or get a, a more focused fight on him. And he's done. See, like I said, I'm glad I prepared because he had three of each. Uh, I'm going to leave the white run guard armor. Hmm. 
now we have absorbed the dragon soul. Uh, and that dragon soul is automatically allocated to the the only shout that we have, which is unrelenting force. Your voice is raw power, pushing aside anything or anyone who stands in your path. These dragon shouts are words in the dragon's language, and basically a dragon uses, when they speak, they use their soul force. Uh, that soul force allows these words to become used as powers or shouts. So when a dragon is speaking, uh, the dragon language is, is or a, a verbal debate between dragons becomes basically a, a, a vicious battle of who has the strongest doom. Um, so Dragonborn, what do you mean? The very oldest tales, back from when there were still dragons in Skyrim, the Dragonborn would slay dragons and steal their power. That's what you did, isn't it? Absorb the dragon's power. I don't know what happened to me. There's only one way to find out. Try to shout. That would prove it. According to the old legend, only the dragonborn can shout without training, the way the dragons do. Dragon, what are you talking about? That's right. My grandfather used to tell stories about the dragonborn. Those born with the dragon blood in them. Like old Tiber Septon himself. I've never heard of Tiber Septon killing any dragons. There weren't any dragons then, idiot. They're <laughs> just coming back now for the first time in forever. But the old tales tell of the dragonborn who could kill dragons and steal their power. You must be one. What do you say, Irilla? You're being awfully quiet. Come on, Irilla. Tell us. Do you believe in this dragonborn business? Phew. Some of you would be better off keeping quiet flapping your gums on matters you don't know anything about. Here's a dead dragon, and that's something I definitely understand. Now we know we have children, but I don't need some mythical dragonborn. Someone who can put down a dragon is more than enough for me. Very sensible. You wouldn't understand about stuff. You ain't a norm. I've been all across Tamriel. I've seen plenty of things just as outlandish as... She took that very offensively. I advise you all to trust in the strength of your sword art over tales and legends. If you really are dragonborn, like out of the old tales, you ought to be able to shout. Can you? Have you tried? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Oh! That was shouting. What you just what did. Power you must be. If you really are dragonborn, then. All right. So they're done. Uh, so now we got to go back to the Jarl. Typically, you 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 can talk to Irleth if you want. She's like that's the hairiest fight she's ever been in. Um, but she's basically just going to tell us to go back to um, the Jarl, let him know what happened, and she's going to regroup those guys ready to defend the tower. That was the voice of the Greybeards calling to the Dragonborn. If you see, actually you can see it right here. That right there is High Hrothgar. Uh, that is where the Greybeards reside. We will be going up there next. Not sure if we're going to do it right now. We could, we got one stop that I want to make uh, to get some, or to get one thing going before we do that. Um, and then once we get that started, then we will head up towards High Hrothgar. So we'll be making a pit stop on our way. You already have been told you're not allowed here. Turn around and go back the way you came. Yeah. Go away. All right, let's see here. We have got some dragon bones and dragon scales. We are gonna save all of those. We want all of those for uh, what we plan to do later on. Um, 
we are going to keep the death bell, keep the glowing mushroom, keep the imp stool. We'll drop the lavender for now, and we'll keep the salt pile. Food, we'll keep that. Scrolls, we'll keep that. Potions, we're going to sell them off as we go. So yes, we are... Uh, the wood axe, we can go ahead and keep... We can go ahead and toss that for now. We've got two camping supplies that we don't need the... We don't need to keep the wood axe on us. Okay. I, I just gave you a septum, like... Ah! I gave her a septum and she already wants me to be her daddy. I spend a lot of time with the that sounded weird. She wants me to be her dad. Alright. I went into the inn and got distracted again and didn't sleep, so we're gonna go take a nap before we leave Whiterun. You're finally here. The Jarl's been waiting for you. You heard the summons. What else could it mean? The Greybeard. You need to get a nap, sir. We were just talking about you. My brother needs a word with you. So what happened at the Watchtower? Was the dragon there? <laughs> the watch wa Watchtower was destroyed, but we killed the dragon. I knew I could count on Irileth. But there has to be more to it. When the dragon died, I absorbed some kind of power from it. It's true. The Greybeards really were summoning you. The Greybeards? The masters of the Way of the Void. They live in seclusion, high on the slopes of the throat of the world. What do the Greybeards, or what do these Greybeards want with me? The Dragonborn is said to be uniquely gifted in the voice. The ability to focus your vital essence into a thule. Or shout. If you really are Dragonborn, they can teach you how to use your gift. Didn't you hear the thundering sound as you returned to Whiterun? That was the voice of the Greybeards, summoning you to High Rothgar. This hasn't happened in centuries, at least. Not since Tiber Septim himself was summoned when he was still Talos of Atmora. Rangar, calm yourself. What does any of this Nord nonsense have to do with our friend here? Capable as he may be, I don't see any signs of him being this, what, dragonborn. Nor nonsense. Why, you puffed up ignorant. These are our sacred traditions that go back to the founding of the First Empire. Prongar, don't be so hard on Avenich. I meant no disrespect, of course. It's just that, what do these Greybeards want with him? That's the Greybeards' business, not ours. Whatever happened when you killed that dragon, it revealed something in you, and the Greybeards heard it. If they think you're dragonborn, who are we to argue? You'd better get up to High Hrothgar immediately. There is no refusing the summons of the Greybeards. It's a tremendous honor. I envy you, you know, to climb the 7,000 steps again. I made the pilgrimage once. Did you know that? High Hrothgar is a very peaceful place. Very disconnected from the troubles of this world. I wonder that the Greybeards even notice what's going on down here. They haven't seemed to care before. <sighs> no matter. Go to High Hrothgar. Learn what the Greybeards can teach you. You've done a great service for me and my city. Dragonborn. By my right as Jarl, I name you Thane of White Run. It's the greatest honor that's within my power to grant. I assign you Lydia as a personal house carl, and this weapon from my armory to serve as your badge of office. I'll also notify my guards of your new title. Wouldn't want them to think you're part of the common rabble, now would we? We are honored to have you as Thane of our city, Dragonborn. Back to business, Proventus. We still have a city to defend. Okay. Yes, my lord. 
So now you can make a decision if you want. There's two options. The first option is that you can take Lydia here to be your new uh, follower. Uh, Lydia is a heavy armored, uh, short range attacker, extremely strong, and everybody calls her the waifu. Uh, the other option is that you keep Feindall. Now, Feindall, in my opinion, is a better option for this character, primarily because Feindall has the archery option. Lydia does too, but she still will uh, prioritize her sword and shield over a bow in most combat situations. We want that long ranged option so that we don't end up friendly firing Feindall as often. So we will keep Feindall for the time being. Eventually, we will be trading him out for Jizargo. Jizargo is one of the best followers that you can get because his level cap is at 81, if I'm not mistaken. It might be a, a he doesn't have a level cap. It's one of those two. Either way, um, these followers, most of these followers will reach a level cap. Once you be reach beyond that level, they will not level up beyond there. Most house carls uh, that you get, their level cap is level 50. People like uh, Janessa, who you can sometimes find here. She's also in the uh, Drunken Huntsman over here. Uh, she is a hired follower. Her level cap is level 40. Uh, I believe Feindall's level cap is like level 35. Jazargo's level cap is max level at, at, at 81, if I'm not mistaken. If not, then it's it, it, then he doesn't have a level cap at all. We'll pay good money for information. Who are you looking for? A foreigner in these lands. Redguard, like us. She's likely not using her true name. We will pay for any information regarding her location. We are not welcome here in White Oak. So we will be in Rorik's stead if we learn anything. Why are you looking for this person? It's none of your concern. All you need to know is that we're paying for information. If that doesn't interest you, feel free to walk away. Okay, so he's looking for a red guard woman. It's actually Sadri, uh, who is in the inn here. We won't be doing that just yet, but we will be doing that here in the future. Uh, the reason why he's looking for Sadri is because, supposedly, she is an automary spy. Now, this leads into a possible, or this leads into a quest line, a little small quest line, uh, where you would basically either side with Sadri who says that these guys are working for the Aldemary Dominion and that they're trying to kill her. They say that she is an Aldemary spy and they want to take her back to Redguard to for her to stand on trial. Now you I, honestly I don't think that um, if you know anything about Skyrim lore I think that they're both not telling the full story. Uh, first of all, Sadri's story doesn't quite make sense because the Red Guard are currently at war with the Aldemary Dominion. So it would be weird for this particular group of, um, this particular group of Alakir warriors to be, um, working with the Aldemary Dominion to take on, to take on Sadri, or to find Sadri. However, that is not unheard of. Uh, they could be traitors to their country, and then they're trying, and they're under the the gold was just too good, or whatever. May have you. Uh, the other thing that's weird about these two is that he says that she's an Aldemary spy, however, and that he's going to take her back to face trial. However, when they take her, her ashes show up in the um, uh, in the hole of the dead. Oh, I said we were going to sleep first. Uh, so her ashes show up in the Hall of the Dead here in Whiterun. So obviously he didn't take her uh, to face uh, the judgment um, there at... Um, uh, take her to face judgment by the tribunal or whatever. Whatever it's called. Their ruling body is called. Uh, so, I, I honestly, also there's the thing that if you side with her and uh, fight them and take them out, 
uh, eventually the Thalmor, um, a, a Thalmor contingency will be sent to uh, attack you, which is kind of weird, the timing of all of that. Uh, leads me to believe more of her side than I do of their side. What can I get you? Sure thing. It's yours for a day. I had to. The farmers are charging me double for the same test. Okay, so we will sleep for the full... We'll actually get an early start. We'll sleep until 7. We be hungry. Okay. Uh, also, we picked up a, the Axe of White Run, undead up to level 13, flee for 30 seconds. We're going to hold on to that because we're going to disenchant that. That is an excellent enchantment to get this early on. Um, even though this is a uh, considered a unique weapon, um, <clears throat> just because of the name, the Axe of White Run, since it is disenchantable, so we are going to disenchant it, and that undead up to level 13 flee, that is awesome as an enchantment. That that enchantment is one of the most powerful enchantments you can get on a weapon uh, for early levels. Uh, and will give you a ton of, ex of uh, enchanting experience every time you enchant a weapon with that. So uh, the turn on dead enchantment, extremely strong. We will be disenchanting that and having that as an option for us later on when we start leveling our enchanting. Now, we've got some stuff we got to do. So we are going to hop on our horse. And we are going to make our way. The first place that we want to hit is we want to go to Windhelm. Uh, specifically, we want to just basically peek at the stables and at the Windhelm uh, city. The reason why we want to do this is because eventually we're going to want to get the Necromancer's Amulet. Uh, the Necromancer's Amulet is an amulet that gives us plus 50 to our Magicka. Uh, lowers the cost reduction on conjuration spells, um, but it uh, decreases our health and our stamina regeneration rate. We're playing on survival difficulty, so our health regenerates. Uh, it, our health does not have a regeneration rate at all, uh, and then our stamina being dis uh, our stamina having a uh, decreased regeneration does not hurt us all that bad. Uh, considering we're playing as a mage character, even though we're playing as a battle mage. So, oh, there is something going on up here. Let's see what we got. So, the negative side effects of the, um, of the Necromancer's Amulet is not as effective against us since we're on the survival difficulty. Okay, this is Tassiger against some bandits, so we're going to quick save here just in case we accidentally hit Tassiger and um, cause him to be aggroed on us. And there we go. We helped him take out some bandits. Grab the lockpick. Nothing crazy there. Nice little random encounter. For these random encounters, you want to make sure that you keep your horse back because your horse will try to jump into the fray. And uh, horses are not... Um, they're not considered to be... Um, I forget the term. Basically, they, they can die. So we got a couple wolves up here. I make sure I can hit him. They both dead already? Well. 
We can grab the wolf pelts if we wanted to, but I don't really need them at the moment. There's another standing stone over here, the apprentice stone. We don't need that at the moment either. Some more wolves. We'll be able to outrun them. You got to kind of balance the um, the interactions that you take as well as the timing that it takes you to get places. Uh, because of the fact that you get hungry, you get tired, you get cold. And since we're going up to Windhelm, which is a very snowy city, we are going to have to deal with some cold weather up there. So we're going to switch to our fur stuff here soon. Volthine Towers, these are all bandits. Looks like she's not going to engage with us this time. Sometimes she'll engage with us and make us pay a toll, or try to make us pay a toll. So as soon as it starts getting like a uh, snowy type environment, then we're going to switch over to um, switch over to our fur gear. Right now we're nice and warm. We could actually cut this journey a little bit and take a shortcut. Uh, let me show you on the map here. You can cut across here, across this river, and follow a trail, uh, like a side trail, all the way up through to here. Uh, we, however, are going to just go ahead and follow the path, because that's typically the safest way to go. Oh, that spider got me. Not real worried about it. This is a skooma dealer. We're on the horse. He shouldn't interact with us. You can tell because he's wearing the rags, but he's also got the iron gauntlets, so he's a brawler. Oh. So he's a brawler. Um, he won't attack with a weapon. He'll just use fists. Okay. there's So if you want to go straight to High Hrothgar, then you would, go the, you would take the Ivarstead route and go just on your way to High Hrothgar. We, however, are going to go to Windhelm first because we want to get some things started. Another cool thing is if I were to go ahead and swallow one of the potions, or not potions, but the um, the soups that I have, the effects of the plus one to stanima for 720 seconds would also affect the horse. Uh, so I would literally have infinite run on the horse for seven er, for 720 seconds, which would be really cool. That's basically seven minutes of infinite run. We're not going to do that because we want to save those soups for later. In case we get into a position where we're going to need them. I know of one position where we will need them. Oh, Sabra Cat. Scary. Scary, scary, scary. Let's run away. We are not in a position where we can fight a Sabra Cat. They will easily kill us even on the horse if the sabre cat hits us we will probably die so we're just going to avoid that at all costs all right so we are starting to get snowy so let's go ahead and change our gear That's a farmer going to join the Stormcloaks. And here we are at Wendhelm. We're going to run inside to Windhelm. 
Uh, so basically, when you enter Windhelm, uh, you start a counter. Uh, and basically, for on the fifth time that you enter Windhelm, and that includes entering the point of the stable. So you enter the stables, that starts the counter. Then you enter Windhelm, that gives you counter number two. And then until you, once you hit entering Windhelm five times, uh, now sometimes it starts before then, sometimes it might start after then, but five times in total you enter Windhelm um, and you will start a quest line. That quest line is where, um, if you come over here to the graveyard, you will find right over here a dead woman uh, laying right across the grave. She had been attacked. Um, Oh, let's grab these nightshade here. My job's simple enough. They don't really complain much. Grab these nightshade. And I think that if you go to um, the Pale Palace, then it also counts towards one of those uh, visits towards Rindholm. I'd have to double check the math on that. But. We want to grab that. We want to grab these hanging moss here. These are all free to take. We're going to make good use of those eventually. This is a good source of hanging moss. There's actually a bunch of them here. Some of them are hard to grab uh, because if you look at it the right, you have to be looking at it at the right angle for it to show up. Uh, the easiest angle that I've always found is from the top. Alright, so there are these over here too. This one here is another one that you got to look at it from the right angle. Grab all this hanging moss here. We will definitely put that to good use later on. All right, and then head over to the palace. Palace of the Kings. We'll go in and go out. And so that should count as three visits to Windhelm. Uh, and if that does, we should only need two more visits, and then we will have the graveyard open, or the graveyards, the start for that quest line uh, to be ready to go. So, next time we come here to Windhelm, we should be able to come right here and start that quest line, which would be very nice, uh, because we will be able to grab the uh, Necromancer amulet once we go through that quest line. So... To trigger that three more times, you have to completely leave, the, or two more times, you have to completely leave the cell, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, we will go, now that we've got done that and got that started, we will go ahead and go on our way to Ivarstead. Let's see if the Khajiits are here yet. If they're here, we can get a quick warm up. They are not, so they don't have their campfire set up. That's unfortunate. All right, so let's make our way to Avarstead. Go back through the way we came. We are going to, unfortunately, uh, probably end up having to run away from that Sabre Cat again. Um, I don't know if it will have despawned or not. Oh, something's here. Oh, warrior. Just trying to steal my goodies. Interestingly enough, Feindall didn't show up that whole time we were in Windhelm. At least I didn't see him. There is the three wolves. 
we need to save a bit of our... Yep, see, there's that Sabre Cat again. Save a bit of our Stanima. I wish the Sabre Cat and the Wolves would fight, but that doesn't quite work that way. In survival mode, you have to be good at being able to run away from enemies. Uh, if you try to fight every um, every fight, you will die a lot. So understand your limits, understand what you can take on. We are not able to take on that Sabre Cat. Even if I were to summon a... Um, even if I were to summon a... Um, oh, the old orc. Uh, summon an Atronach, that Sabre Cat would literally three-shot the Atronach and then kill us. Like, it just, it's that simple. So, we know our limits. We're not going to try to overstay ourselves and chance dying. This is Fort Amal. There's actually a Spell Tome in there that we could grab that's very good. It's a Bound Bow. So, just like the Bound Sword cost no or it has no weight to it uh, and it is a very strong early bow all right so if you decided to continue on the way instead of making that detour to Windhelm uh, you see here we've got our little things here uh, that says if Arstead so if you take this way and then you continue on, you're right up here next to Fort Amal. Oh, there's a mage close by. I wonder if they're going to aggro onto us. Yeah, so we're just going to go this way. Uh, basically, you look for that stone stack, uh, that stack of stones right there, and you make your way up this path. And then just follow the path, go up to the side of the mountain. Sometimes there is a bear or... Looks like we just got this guy here. Uh, I think that's the guy who's looking to looking for ingredients for the gourmet. Uh, so just follow this path all the way around. There's going to be some random encounters as you go up here. There may be some like sabre cats or a bear or just a fox or or whatever. Just follow this path all the way up the mountain. And this will shortcut you to Ivarstead. So instead of going, instead of going all the way around, which if you were to take the path, it would take you this way, take you where you cut across here, come over here, come around, and then come back up through here and come up to this side of the of Ivarstead. By going up this mountain here, you literally cut out basically all of that and it just takes you right there all right i'm gonna start walking here because we're gonna need to conserve our stanima it's usually right around these next three corners you will see some kind of aggravated encounter usually right around here somewhere you might have gotten lucky okay I'm not seeing it I'm not seeing a wisp of mother not seeing nothing cool all right, so I still definitely want to hold off on running, though, because there will be a troll right up over here. And he will immediately aggro onto you. So you just run right through. Troll, like Sabre Cats, you can fight a troll. Like, it's his AI is very easy to exploit. Uh, so you can fight him and most likely win, uh, but it's just not worth the time. We'll just run right up here to Ivarstead. Okay. 
Okay, and then High Hrothgar is right up. I don't know my, why my sneak leveled up. High Hrothgar is right up this mountain up here. That's a 7,000 steps, but before we make our way there, we're going to sleep at the inn again. Get nice and warm. Stand close to the fire. Grab a nap. If I were you, sure thing. It's yours for a day. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. It is 12.58 p.m. It's actually fairly early, so we will just sleep until 2. Grab our level up. We will grab it in Magicka. And where do we want to put the point? I think we're going to hold off on this point for now. Um, yeah. We're going to hold off on this point for now because once we get to level 20, we're going to grab destruction dual casting because we want to get that impact um, perk Let as quickly as possible. All right. Um, what in the Stay world? No trouble, Kinsman. <laughs> okay, so if you want to do this the easy way, you can take your horse and run him up those 7,000 steps. We're not going to do this the easy way, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk to Clement. Mostly food supplies like dried fish. The Greybeards tend not to get out much, if you catch my... Well, it's kind of an understanding between us. I mean, it just wouldn't feel right to charge them for a bit of... Trouble is, my legs aren't what they used to be, and climbing the 7,000 steps takes its toll. Really? Well, that would be kind of you. Here, take this bag of supplies. At the top of the steps, you'll see the offering chest. Just leave the bag in... Not today. Alright, so he's telling, asking us to take the bag of supplies all the way up the 7,000 steps and leave it in the offering chest for them. Uh, which we are going to happily do because he will give us gold for doing so. But the reason why we're not going to take our horse is because we want to get these etched stone tablets. These etched stone tablets tell a story. So emblem one, before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all of Mundus. Their word was a voice, and they spoke only for true needs. For the voice could blot out the sky and flood the land. Uh, these stone tablets, if you collect all ten, or if you look at all ten, it gives you a buff. That buff is extremely powerful. Uh, so we are going to take the trip and go ahead and travel up to get all of the stone tablets. Dog's already started fighting with me. So we're going to travel up these 7,000 stone steps, or 7,000 steps. I actually have not counted these, although I do I do remember uh, early on in Skyrim there was a player who went ahead and counted all of these. And I do believe it did come out to 7,000, which was kind of interesting. Um, but we are going to make our way up. We'll have to fight a few um, encounters on the way. That spider is just number one. We'll have to fight some ice wolves, a frost troll, so on and so forth. Keep an eye out for wolves. Tablet number two. Men were born and spread over the face of Mundus. The dragons presided over the crawling masses. Men were weak then and had no voice.
All right, let's quick save here, just in case we get into a situation. There are some wolves up here. Summon that just to get this attention, and it's coming after me. Whee! Oh, there we go. We went to a spot where we weren't able to be targeted by the wolf, so it switched targets. And done. So yeah, there's 10 tablets that, that are spread out. They all tell a story. We're going to grab, try to grab all 10 of them. There's another wolf right there. Oh. see what we got here now because with conjuration level 40 we actually have the benefit of getting atromacy this gives double duration for our conjured atronox we're going to put the point there uh, that means that our conjured atronox will now last twice as long so that's a very beneficial or beneficial perk point to have All right, etched stone tablet lot number three. The fledging, fledgling spirits of men were strong in old times, unafraid to war with dragons in their voices, but the dragons only shouted them down and broke their hearts. So this is telling the story of how uh, the men managed to uh, overthrow the dragons. Now, some of my favorite mods actually turn... Uh, so, I feel like they could have done a lot more with this mountain range. Oh, we're already chilly. Uh, they could have done a lot more with this mountain range. And one of my favorite mods turns this section right up here and creates a palace right there uh, for a Dragonborn character. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Okay, number four says, Kine called on Parthenax, who pitied man. Together, they taught men to use the voice. The, then, dragon war raged. Dragon against Tom. Uh, so the men who were born with the... Or not born with the ability, but men who were taught the ability to use the, their voice and shout as dragons do. Uh, all Nords are born... Or all races are born with a, an ability to learn if they take the time. Um, however, it does take effort and time to do so. The Greybeards are all extremely old, um, and it took them many, many, many years to learn how to use their voices. Um, oh, he focused me. He turned on me. Ah! We do not want him to focus on me. Oh, missed him. So the trick with these trolls are their regeneration is insanely powerful. So the trick with these trolls is to injure them with fire. Uh, because fire does the burning damage which stops them from healing up afterwards. So that burn- oh, we are going to be careful. So that lingering burning effect will stop them from healing as quickly. Uh, so you want to make sure that you hit them with the fire to s prevent them from regenerating their health. Oh, he's on me again. On me again. Gotta be careful here. Oh, I'm not trying to hit you, Fangal. We 
gotta be careful about hitting Fangal right now because he's lower in health. If we hit him, he can die, and we don't want him to die. Oh, I'm out of Magicka. So now he's gonna start healing up. See how his health was going up? I have Magicka potions, so I could use a Magicka potion and um, but yeah I could use a Magicka potion and get like to, to get my Magicka back quicker I didn't think it was necessary he was low enough health as long as my Conjured Atronach stayed alive and, and was at least hitting him once every couple seconds then his healing was not going to do enough to, to get him out of danger from us All right, so now we're on tablet number five. We are fairly cold. Man prevailed, shouting, shouting Alduin out of the world, proving for all that their voice was, or their voice too was strong. Although their sacrifices were manyfold. So that's talking about the triumph over Alduin, uh, the World Eater, who is the dragon that we're going to be facing. All right, so I do technically have a ca have the camping supplies. So if I wanted to use the camping supplies, I could place down a campfire right over here, uh, and be able to get our or to get ourselves warmed up. However, we're still fair. Like we're about a little over halfway. We're close enough that I don't think it's going to be necessary to use those camping supplies. With roaring tongues, the Sky Children conquer, founding the first empire with sword and voice, whilst the dragons withdrew from this world. Number seven, the tongues at Red Mountain went away humbled. Jurgen Windcaller began his seven-year meditation to understand how strong voices could fail. So this is talking about Jurgen Windcaller. The um, he was one of the strongest tongues of the time. Uh, he would go and fight at the Red Mountain, and it turned out he actually ended up losing a major battle. Uh, so he went into a silent meditation to try to figure out why, even though he had the power of the voice, why did he lose that battle? Jurgen Wincaller chose silence and returned. The 17 disputants could not shout him down. Jurgen the Calm built his home at the throat of the world. Uh, so when he came back from his meditation, he realized that the reason why he lost the battle was because he used, was using the power of the voice uh, for nefarious means, for means that the gods did not approve of. They were supposed to be used to save mankind from the dragons, and beyond that were, were supposed to be used to uh, worship Kine, the goddess of, the, uh, of, of peace. Um, but because they were using their tongues for, for reasons that they shouldn't have been, uh, they lost the, they lost the battle. The gods did not follow, or the gods did not give them the backing. So when he came back from his meditation, he decided to choose silence. Uh, there were 17 men who decided to try to take his, his role as leader. Uh, and so they all shouted at him, trying to take him down. But his, his newfound peace allowed him to prevail. For years, all silent, the Greybeard spoke one name. Tiber Septim, stripe, er, Stripling then, was summoned to Hrothgar. They blessed and named him Dova Cain. Uh, Tiber Septim was the last known dragonborn. Um, and so the, the Greybeards called him to their uh, temple to try to teach him the way of the voice. And they named him Dovahkiin, which, mean, Dova which means dragon blood. The voice is worship. 
follow the inner path, speak only in true need. And now we get the voice of a sky blessing. This is why we wanted to walk up here. Uh, because getting this voice of sky blessing is extremely powerful, especially for early levels. So voice of sky says animals will neither attack nor flee from you. So as long as you do not attack an animal, it will not attack you. The wolves, ice wolves, sabre cats, grizzly bears, anything that is considered an animal will not aggro onto us, which is massive. Drop off Kimlech's supplies. We'll have to return to him after we're done. And we can enter High Hrothgar. All right, we need to warm up before we start this whole thing. So let's hop up here onto this warm plate. This will allow us to gain our warmth back fairly quickly. We are now warm and comfortable. So, the dragonborn appears this moment in the turning of the age. You call me dragonborn. What does that mean? I already know what that means, and, and for the character-wise, um, he already knows what a Dragonborn is. We're just going to go, I'm answering your summons. We will see if you truly have the gift. Show us, Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. So he wants us to shout at him. Oof! Master Angi. I speak for the Greybeards. Now, tell me, Dragonborn. Why have you come here? Well, you called for me. Uh, I am answering your summons, Master. We are honored to welcome a Dragonborn to High Hrothgar. We will do our best to teach you how to use your gift in fulfillment of your destiny. What is my destiny? That is for you to discover. We can show you the way, but not your destination. I am ready to learn. You have shown that you are dragonborn. You have the inborn gift. But do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path? Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into a thum, a shout. Now let us see if you are willing and able to learn. When you shout, you speak in the language of dragons. Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. All shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Master Einarth will now teach you Roll, the second word in unrelenting force. Roll means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine it with Fus, force, to focus your thumb more sharply. Roll. <laughs> So usually I have Raven who's like bumping up against my hands as I'm trying to play video games. Uh, but today it is her brother Crow who is up here saying hi, which is not normal. Crow's not usually as, as friendly towards me as he is towards my wife, and then Raven is more friendly towards me than she, than she is towards my wife. So it's interesting to see Crow up here being all friendly. Dragonborn, you can absorb He's a cutie. Life force that you He's my other void kitten. As part of your I say kitten, he's over a year old now. Will allow you to tap into his understanding of role. He's going to cause me to press buttons, though. So now we have two words of power for the unrelenting force shout. 
uh, that is going to increase the power of unrelenting force by quite a bit. It also increases the cooldown of unrelenting force. <laughs> All right, so this is the reason why we had to warm up before we go do the next one, is because we're going to go back outside uh, into the cold of the High Hrothgar Courtyard. Now, if you do get too cold, there is a campfire right over here. You'll be able to stand by this campfire, warm up real quick, and then go about your business. Obviously, you can't go up there yet. Alright, so now we have a completely new shout, uh, which is Wold, part of Whirlwind, Whirlwind Sprint. Uh, this shout allows you, so this thune rushes forward, carrying you in its wake with the speed of the Tempest. Uh, what this allows you to do is to jump a very far distance in a straight line. Mastery of a new thune is uh, astonishing. I'd heard the stories of the abilities of Dragonborn, but to see it for myself? I thought it was this easy for everyone. No, indeed not. But beware that your skill does not outstrip your wisdom. You are now ready for your last trial. Retrieve the horn of Jurgen Windcaller, our founder, from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ustenglau. Remain true to the way of the void, and you will return. Alright, so we're just going to go with a few questions here. Uh, we know a lot of information, but let's go ahead and go, like character-wise, we know a lot of information. We know why the dragons return. Um, we know what it means to be dragonborn. Uh, so we're just going to go with who was it, Jurgen Windcaller? He was a great war leader of the ancient North, master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory 
and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was made. What is the way of the, the voice? The voice was a gift of the goddess Kinnery at the dawn of time. She gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this gift has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. True mastery of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. In the contemplation of the sky, Kinnereth's domain, and the practice of the voice, we strive to achieve this balance. But I don't follow your philosophy. Why help me learn the voice? The dragonborn is an exception to all the rules. The dragon blood itself is a gift of the gods. If we accept one gift, how can we deny the other? As dragonborn, you have received the ability to shout directly from Akatosh. We therefore seek to guide you on the proper use of your gift, which transcends the restrictions which bind other men. So basically, I am allowed to use my voice to fight, uh, where they are not allowed to unless it's for their own, like, unless they're in mortal danger. Um, so I am allowed to use my voice to deal with, with threats to, like, dragons, like the, the dragon threat, so on and so forth. Okay, we are fully warm. Uh, now, there is two options here of what you can do. You can either go climb all the way back down this mountain, which is the way that I'm going to go. Just go the way that you came, go all the way down. Or you can start hopping down this mountain and make it down the mountain just with safe hops. And if you do it from over in that direction, you can see Whiterun from over in that direction. You can go right to Whiterun that way. We want to go back to Windhelm, so we are going to go down the mountain the way we came up. We'll use a shout every now and then. It is nighttime, so this is going to be kind of this is going to be a little bit more difficult to stay warm. Uh, we will be more cold by the time we get back down to Avarstead. Um, so just keep that in mind, nighttime is probably not the best time to do this. But we are in Nord, we're wearing full armor, and we have a campsite if we need to. We also have the hot soup if we need to as well. So the reason why I want to go back to Windhelm is I want to get another lock in of the uh, of the five visits to Windhelm so that we can get closer to getting to, to that Necromancer amulet. Uh, if we can get the Necromancer amulet, if we can start the quest line while we're there, We'll go ahead and do that, uh, but I think we'll have to do one. We'll have to visit there one more time, if not two more times. It just depends on if the if the Palace of the Kings counts as a visit or not. So we'll go about this, um, make one more visit to Windhelm, and then we will uh, take a carriage from Windhelm to um, Morthal, which there is, uh, in my notes here, we wanted to pick up the the player home that's in Morthal, that's an, under the Creation Club, uh, Mirror Watch, which is the kind of a, it's more of a, like a mage player home, so it's very fitting for our character to grab that one. The good thing is, is we can get that player home completely free. Alright, 
right, so we are already feeling the effects of the cold, but we are getting closer to the bottom. That's something that I should have done. I should have started picking up some torches. Uh, those torches can help you keep you or keep you from freezing to death. Uh, so even though they only give you five warmth, uh, they are enough to stop you from dying from hypothermia. Um, so I definitely should have started picking up some torches when I was over at um, Ember Sharp Mine. But no big deal. We're down at the bottom where it's nice and warm. We're back into Varstead. Uh, we are drained, so we are going to go ahead and sleep the night away. And then we'll grab our horse and be on our way. Oh. These guys are troublesome. The graveyard seemed to think so. The liars already taken root, so we shall expose for them the falseness in their hearts. When Lord Mirak appears, all shall be. Oh, I missed him. He's too powerful. We need fast healing here, so we'll use potions. I don't want to accidentally hit one of these soldiers because then they will all target me. Alright, so he died. Uh, we will grab the Cultist Orders, the Potion of Destruction, uh, the Scroll, and the Robes and Mask. Again, I don't want to, like, aggro these guys. Uh, and then we'll grab his as well. So, this actually, and it's actually a very good thing that we, that we grab these guys here. So, our current robes, uh, as you can see here, novice robes, Magicka regenerates 50% faster. The cultist robes, Magicka regenerates 75% faster. Also, they kind of match the aesthetic as of, of what we want to go with. We are going to go with... Um, we are going to be kind of um, a dragon priest character. So these robes kind of fit that bill a lot better than what we were currently wearing. And then the dragon priest mask being heavy armor is excellent for us because that again fits the aesthetic because the dragon priest masks are, that we are going to be using are also heavy armor. So that gives us an armor or armor bonus as well. Uh, it does not, however, give us as strong of an enchantment. That novice hood gives us plus 30 magicka, which is very beneficial for us. But for now, we'll go ahead and use the cultist mask. Uh, as for warmth, 
the cultist robes is 27, which is equal to what the novice robes does. The novice hood is 18, the cultist mask is 18. So we've got the warmth down. Uh, Imperial brace is 13, and steel cuff boots 24. The cultist boots are 13, but they're not an armor piece, so they don't give an armor rating. And then the gloves are light armor and only give a warmth of 18. So we're better off just keeping the heavy armor that we're currently wearing. But this fits kind of the aesthetic of what we want. Obviously, we're not a cultist. We're not one of Mirex cultists. Uh, but we've got the we've got the look for now. And if you wanted to, you could just go ahead and just do the cultist uh, robes with the novice hood, and not worried about the the mask at the moment. The colors are a little bit off, but they're not like crazy. Like it, it, you can see there, the colors are a little off, but it's okay. It still works. All right, so let's get our another nap in. And we will nap until 8 a.m. We've made it through the main things that we wanted to get through today. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is I want to get to Mirror Watch. Uh, so if if we get enough visits to Windhelm, or if we go visit Windhelm one more time and the quest line starts, then we will hold off on going to Mirror Watch and we will catch the quest line in the next video. Uh, but if the quest line hasn't started yet, then we will go ahead and make our way to Mirror Watch. Where's my horse? Where's he at? Where are you? That's what I like about the mod pack. Um, there's a mod pack that does, it's immersive and, ex uh, uh, immersive and something. Uh, and then you can click a button and call your horse to you, uh, which is nice. I don't know where he went. Let's see if he's around the backside over here. Where'd you go? He must have got involved in the fighting. I just don't know where he where he went to. Not around the back over here, is he? Did I already check that? Not over here. Be careful. Oh, there he is, right there. All right. So we will head back down this mountain. Animals are no longer frightened of us. Trolls, unfortunately, do not count as animals. They are creatures, and so they do still count. They still stu or they still do uh, target onto us. But we can outrun a troll fairly easily with a horse, so I'm not too worried about it. There was a hanging moss there we could have grabbed, but we're going to come back up this way anyway, so it does not matter. We can grab it then. I may take a cart over to Whiterun real fast and grab all the items that are in my chat, or in my barrel there. That way we don't have to worry about them despawning because that barrel is not safe storage. Uh, you can utilize it as safe, safe storage as long as you're guaranteed to be back within in White Run within 10 days, like 10 end game days, which we're only on like three end game days right now. So we've got plenty of time to make it. Ooh, owie. We've got plenty of time to make it back to um, the barrel. But if we stop there, grab that stuff, then we can take it to Mirror Watch with us because Mirror Watch has all safe storage for us. 
The skeever shouldn't. Oh, he is aggro. Why is the skeever aggroing on us? He's not. He's aggroing on the horse. Like, wait a second. Someone do something. That's weird, though. I don't know why that wouldn't extend to the horse, too. I feel like the voice of Sky should extend to the horse as well. But that's just me. All right. We're down the mountain. Let's head over to Windhelm. I can hear the dragon off in the distance. We shouldn't be getting anywhere close to it, so we should be fine. You cut. You sometimes gotta worry about the random dragons that show up. Oh, there's the Alakir war warriors harassing a red guard woman. It's one that they think is is the one they're after. So he's going to probably aggro on the horse, but he shouldn't aggro on us. Yeah. It might be because I don't have a saddle on the horse. I don't have the horse as m marked as mine yet. But I'm not going to worry about saddling the horse because we're going to be getting a different horse later on after we make our way to uh, Winterhold. So we are back at Wendhelm. I am not doing the College of uh, Winterhold questline yet. I am actually going to wait till after we finish all the stuff with Jurgen Windcaller. We get the three shouts. Um, so in between uh, the quest of Jurgen Windcaller and the Kinds Grove for Delphine, that's when we're going to make our way to the College of Winterhold. The reason why I'm timing it that way is because um, for storyline wise, for roleplay wise, oh, she's still here. So since she's still here, uh, that means that we are at time number three or time number four. So we will instead go in here. Uh, so for roleplay wise, uh, it's this more fitting because... Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Because a character, Shalador, he is looking, he is wanting to get the full powers of a Dragonborn. He wants to unlock the power, the powers of a Dragonborn. That's his first priority. Okay, Fane Dog, get out. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we want to, is this Susanna? No, that's not Susanna. Um... We're only going to go three hours here. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, storyline-wise... Oh, she's not here now. Oh, there she is. Okay. So, yeah. So, the reason why I was looking for her, because she's a beggar that is involved with the quest line. So, since she's not over there in the graveyard, we know that the quest hasn't started yet. <clears throat> 
So anyway, start, like I was saying, roleplay wise, we are um, heading towards. Uh, we want to get the full powers. We want to unlock the full powers of the Greybeards or, or the full support of the Greybeards before we do anything else. Uh, that's the reason why we were reborn as a, or why we got reborn as a Dragonborn, so that we can unlock the Dragonborn powers. So we will do the very first, all the first parts of the quest, so that we can get the full unrelenting force shout and unlock the support of the Greybeards. I'd like to hire go? your carriage. Let's go to White Run. Oh, the Khajiits are out. That's alright, I don't think I have anything to sell at the moment. Okay, now we are tired and cold. So we are going to run up here, grab the stuff out of... Oh, sorry, hungry and cold. That's the unfortunate side effect of doing the traveling through the um, through the carriage is that you will go through a ton of food very fast because every time you hop off that carriage, uh, you are going to be extremely hungry. Technically, you use less hunger by traveling on foot than you do when you're tired or when you use a carriage. All right, let's grab some warmth here. Don't think we are, yeah, we're not tired yet, so we can hold off. We will go ahead and grab the warmth. Yep, we are warm. And we will go ahead and grab all of these things. Give Feindal some Still of those. Here. What do you want me to carry? Specifically those that drops us into not having being overweight. And now we can go to um, Marthal. So where we're going now is up here to Morthal. Uh, when we reach Morthal, we're going to take a quick side route and go to Mirror Watch. Mirror Watch is a player home that is added in with the Creation Club content. Uh, it is a wizard style, like wizard's tower style yeah. home, uh, which is extremely fitting for our character. Uh, if you saw when I traveled to White Run, White Run was 20 gold. Uh, I didn't know if anybody knows this, or I'm sure if there are people who know this. Any place that has a carriage uh, is going to have is only going to cost 20 gold to travel to. Any place that does not have a carriage is going to cost 50 gold to travel to. I thought that was a really cool addition because it basically means that they, it's deadhead. So what that means is, is he's going to have to travel to Morthal, and then from Morthal the carriage would have to go somewhere where there is a carriage. So he'd have to travel without a com without a companion or without a a customer to travel somewhere where there is a carriage. So that's the reason why those places are cost more gold, uh, because he'd have to go basically empty. What's the y'all going to do about it? Now there's lots of stuff he here to do in Morthal. Uh, we're gonna do some of that stuff later. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is going to focus on going to Mirror Watch, which is located right over here. careful this water is cold so if you go too deep you will get immediately cold uh, Morthal has a ton of death bell 
and swamp fungal pods. These swamp fungal pods are important, but we don't need them at the moment. Uh, so we are going to wait until after we're done with everything else we need to do here. We will do that after we do the Jurgen Windcaller quest that we need to do over there. So before we head back to get the horn. This is a chorus. This little insect thing is insanely strong. Thankfully, it is an animal, so it will not attack us as long as we don't target it. But this thing is creepy. Here is where we're coming to, Mar uh, Morthal. Or sorry, Mirror Watch. This is, as you can see, I mean, it's got a, uh, a statue of Magnus on here. It is a wizard home. So what we need to do is come over here. You don't necessarily need to talk to this guy or uh, search this guy, but we're going to go ahead and do that anyway. Grab the journal, grab the flame spell. We don't need that either because we already know the flame spell. Uh, he can keep his fur. Actually, you know what? Let's take his fur armor. Because that is, gives us a second set of fur armor that we can look to enchant later on if we need to. Uh, so what you do here to get into here, you can read the book if you want to, but basically it says that there is a um, a trick to entering Sindar's Tower Notes. This one right here. Deep in the swamps of Hjalmarch, where the branches are gar gnarled and the mist is thick, lies the Tower of Unknown Providence. Few in the province dare speak the name of Mirrorwatch, and those that do couch their words with apprehension and fear. Yet the mystery of the tower only piques my interest further, and so I have made my my life's made it my life's work to discover its secrets. What I can deduce of its past comes from its present, from the cut of the stone to the wards that surround it. Every piece is a clue, a signature that can be traced back to a pen and hand. The stone seal that guards the entrance is none other than the Eye of Magnus, a symbol born from the legacy of Shalador. Its burning gaze can be found not just in Mirrorwatch, but outside the College of Winterhold. Could it be the mages here were cast out from the college and set to carve their own path? This is but a theory, and yet one I feel has merit. Nevertheless, without access to the mind of its occupants, true insights will remain frustratingly out of grasp. So I felt like that this home, like, it was a very fitting uh, player home for our Shalador character. Uh, and since it is extremely close to Morthal, as well as being extremely close to Labyrinthian, which is located right here, this was a perfect spot for us. Cast fire on the eye, and it summons a rabbit. The rabbit runs... and enters the pool. Boom! And now the door is unlocked. We have now access to Mirror Watch. And since we did that, the Mirror Watch is now considered our home. Uh, this is a phenomenal player house. Uh, still running in that tower look. Uh, it's got uh, mannequins, it's got all kinds of stuff. There's stuff that you can grab from up here. You can grab gold, uh, a ring, potions. Like, there's just a lot of stuff in here that you can take and use. Tons of ingredients, hanging moss, hanging all over the place. This place is cool. And then if you take this little teleporter here... It brings you into the second floor of the Mirror Watch Tower, uh, where you have the ability to place down plants that you need to, uh, that you want to grow. You have like a staff enchanter as well as some basic staffs that you can use. You've got a regular enchanter, an alchemy table with a ton of alchemy ingredients. There's alchemy ingredients all the way throughout here. There's a smithing spot. Uh, more mannequins and places to put your uh, weapons and gear that you pick up. This is just an absolutely phenomenal place. Um, they've got places for some of the unique weapons, like the unique daggers and so on and so forth. You've got a place for all your dragon priest masks, uh, which is really cool. 
just all in all some really cool areas here. Uh, so, with that we are going to load this place in as our house. Grab this barrel here, we'll put all of our ingredients in here. I'm going to empty all of my inventory, everything, and then we will grab the things that we will need uh, for the, uh, once we get basically set up. So we'll grab what we need um, to take, w take with us, everything else will stay here. So let me go ahead and go about and organize what I want to put where. All the soul gems can go in here. We will put a set of the cultist robes there. We will put some stuff that we have for enchanting that we can use to enchant in here. can go ahead and disenchant the Axe of White Run. I'm tempted to disenchant the Novice Hood and try to put an enchantment. The problem is, is that we are so weak in enchanting right now that we do not have the necessary um, the necessary points in enchanting to make it worth it. So we're just going to not do that at the moment. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and put our fur armor on a mannequin at the moment. Uh, and then in... Oh, that's already set up. So we'll keep the full soul gems in here and put the empty ones all in here. Let's grab. Behind you. What do you want me to carry? The three dragon bones and three dragon scales from him. Going, then. We will put that into this knapsack here with any other smithing ingredients. Okay. The brooms we will put over here. We will need that when we go to um, the castle of, or the College of Winterhold. All right, so we've got some random stuffs: pickaxe, woodcutter axe. We don't need the steel arrows. Uh, we'll put those in there. Put these in there. We'll keep the backpack on. Got some potions. We can put those over here. Scrolls. We can put those in here. books we want to put in the other room. Yeah. It's a wardrobe, but we can count it as a bookshelf. Or we can put it right here in the cupboard. So 
so we've got our backpack that's one pound we've got the steel arrows we can drop those into just some random spot I don't care oh we did have a bookshelf now, actually we can give these to Fingal I've got your back what do you want me to carry okay keys and lock picks not for the wild horses Okay, so that's everything that is worth, or that's everything that we need to take off for now. Let's go back over here. We will grab our fur armor, as well as our, where did I put the dragon priest? I know I put one on there the other one in here I think yes um what is grab the novice hood cultist robes imperial steel cuffed okay so there we go 28 carry weight. Um, while we're here, take the Canis root, take the Swamp Fungal Pod, and okay, so let's go here to the ingredients barrel. We will grab. Two imp stool from here. Two nightshade. We'll make three nightshade. A glowing mushroom. We'll grab two. And that's it for now. So here we'll do an instool, a canis root, and instool. Here we will do a nightshade, a slowy mushroom, and Oop, I didn't mean to grab that, that's okay. A nightshade. And then in here, so we got Canis Root, Impstool, Canis Root. So we'll go Impstool. No more Impstool. Oh, sorry. Swamp Fungal Pod. Swamp Fungal Pod. already got a canis root in this. We got two canis root, two instool, two swamp fungal pod. We got two glowing mushroom, two nightshade. I think that's fine. I think that's okay. We'll stick with that for now. Um... While we're here, oh, I just put all my ingredients into the box anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, there is some fire salts up here. We will collect all these ingredients eventually and put them into our barrel. Let's see here. What else do I need? Got the cultist robes. Got all that. That's good. Got the fur gear. Uh, we need a set of potions. So let's grab our Fortify Destruction, our Healing Potions, our Magicka Potions. And... 
grab one potion of cure disease. That's fine there. Uh, we'll take all of our empty soul gems. We'll leave the full soul gem. We don't need the broom at the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and see here. Where is the destruction? Where did the destruction staff go? Where did it falter? I didn't pick it up, did I? Oh, there it is. Let's see what I can enchant this with. Oh, need the heart stone. Uh, I can only do flames or sparks. The staff of flames or staff of sparks. It's because that's the only real destruction spells that I know that can be put on an enchantment. Or put as an enchantment. So we'll grab these, put these in here. the heart stones in the strong box. Okay. Now we need to go grab our food. So we're just going to grab some cooked brass, some grilled chicken breasts, one hot vegetable soup, and we'll grab five vegetable soups. That'll keep us good to go. Grab a nap. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and grab one more thing to eat, and we'll just eat it right out of here. Now we are satisfied. Okay, that is everything from here for now. We are very well set up, I think. We're in good shape. Let's grab these. Those are pretty good for food items. Yeah, I think we're ready. Um, so, that's it for now. We have finished what I wanted to get done for today, for the most part. We got a few things that we still wanted, that I still wanted to do. One thing in particular was I was hoping to kind of get that, um, I was hoping to kind of get the uh, amulet of, uh, or the necromancer's amulet, but we can wait until the next time to do that. That's not a big deal. Uh, so we will go to, in the next video, we will go to Ustengrav. Uh, and we will deal with everything inside of here. Uh, then that will send us over to Riverwood to do one little thing over there to get that finished out and ready to go. Uh, once we finish off in Riverwood, we can go back up to Windhelm uh, and hopefully get the Necromancer's Amulet and all of that finished up. Then we'll have to make our way back up to High Hrothgar. Um, so that we can get the last part of the unrelenting force shout and then once we've finished with all of that we will finally make our way to winterhold uh so that is the goal that's what we're planning on doing ustengrav um ustengrav riverwood windhelm high hrothgar and then the College of Winterhold, and we'll get that whole quest line started. Uh, now, we will be doing different things in these areas. In fact, before we go up to the College of Winterhold, uh, I will probably go and work on getting my speech up to level 50 uh, with three perk points so that we can get our merchant perk, uh, which will entail doing... Um, some ingredients runs so i will see what i can do about trying to get that video at least time lapsed uh if not i will just go ahead and do the ingredients run off camera um 
so we may actually not get up into Winterhold in the next video. I may go ahead and do the ingredients run after doing all of those so that we can get our speech up to level 50. So it all just kind of depends on what we have time for and what we can do. So um, I don't want to bore you guys with the with the whole ingredients run. So if I can time lapse that, if I can do kind of like a quick time lapsed video uh, showing all the places that I went to and all the things that I did for that, then I might do that. Uh, but it just kind of depends. So anyway. With that being said, thank you so much. If you guys liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe uh, and leave a comment to help support the channel. Uh, I do answer all comments that I can. Um, so if you guys are enjoying the content, please do so. Like I said, the first video is almost at 200 uh, views, which is phenomenal for me. I've never had a video go that high. So I do appreciate your support. Any support you guys can give me, that's, that's super, super helpful. So thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful evening.